Absolutely. You know, you think of Alex Lees as an example that wanted to play a certain way, wanted to play the McCullum and Stokes way, but you have to get runs, you have to back it up. That is still the currency in whatever format, in whatever management, in whatever brand and style they want you to play. And the four lads that get hundreds, some excellent points from your guests there, you know, Joss making the point. However much they back you, you still want to walk in that dressing room with a test hundred to your name and that look from your teammates, that sort of look of appreciation to Harry Brook. We knew you were good, you've gone and delivered. The look to Zach Crawley from Brendan McCullum in that dressing room. I backed you all summer and look what you did here today. Um, it was absolutely an incredible day, really. I keep repeating this. They did it without slogging until a little cameo from Ben Stokes right at the end there in the last half hour. They did it with style and grace. Um, the, the, the shot that got uh, Brook to 100 summed it up, really. Just proper cricket batting, but to get 500 in a day. Athens, as a former opening batsman, have you seen a more dominant display in that first session of a test match from two openers in your time playing the game or commentating or broadcasting on the game? Not from England, no. I mean, I think it was England's most dominant opening two hours of a test match, wasn't it? Although the, the fastest hundred was the previous test match with Crawley and Lees. So that's a, a sign of, a, of an era that is changing rather than the, the specifics. But no, I've not seen anything more dominant from England. I'm thinking back to the, 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 the perhaps really aggressive openers that I've seen down the years, Verenda Sewag. Uh, I've seen him play some incredible innings at the top of the order, Matthew Hayden. So there, there certainly have been dominant openers before, but England, because really of the way the conditions are in England, you, know, you are determined by your conditions to some degree and the way the ball moves around. It's been very tough for openers in the last few years and therefore, you know, you, you have to play the conditions. It's, it's all very well having uh, the intent, but sometimes the conditions, you know, demand that you, you show a little bit of humility. Um, but this was these conditions allowed uh, ben Duckett and Zach Crawley to express themselves to the fullest really and, and they both played superbly Pakistan were on the back foot right from the outset what were the 14 off the first over Duckett hit his first ball for four so you knew straight away about England's intent and it's a combination of factors isn't it you know a good pitch a fast outfield an inexperienced Pakistan attack who bowled poorly combine that with the incredible intent and skill and talent that England have in their ranks but even so 500 is still pretty hard to believe. With Ben Duckett, Nass, when you were speaking to him, I thought it was interesting, we briefly discussed it here, that he said that he'd watched Test Match Cricket at the start of last summer and said, I want to be a part of that. And I imagine there's a lot of cricketers around the country that feel the same. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you want to be a part of this? Not so much because you want to play this brand and style, but because of Stokes and McCullum uh, and, and their sort of management style. It's one of the biggest thing in sport, not just cricket, is how do you take away, how do you get rid of that fear of failure? You're on the biggest stage, you've worked all your life to be an international cricketer, you've got people talking about you in the written press, you've got us talking about you, everyone has that fear of failure and whatever mind games you have, you, are, you have to go out there and try and perform under that biggest pressure that you're ever under. And what I think they like is what Stokes and McCullum are telling them to go out and have fun and enjoy and bring back Test Match Cricket. They're enjoying the fact they want to be part of a team. Duckett wants to be part of a team where people don't worry about their technique, where they're not looking at where their back foot going, their trigger movements. They want to be a part of a team that go out there and express yourself. And if you get it wrong, go out again. What did McCullum say after the South Africa defeat at Lords? A lot of people were saying, oh, they went too hard. Basball won't survive in England. Basball won't play this South African attack. McCullum said, no way, go harder. I couldn't believe it, go harder. So that's what they do. You know, the captain, the way he leads from example, he charges down the pitch in England at 150 for five. He'll charge down the pitch. So what McCullum and Stokes have done to this side so far is take away the fear of failure. And if you can do that to any sports person, you are winning three quarters of the battle because then you can really express yourself. And we've seen that in the last six months. Ath, I joked with you a little earlier about Pascal might be a thousand on this pitch, but you were also talking about having a look at the practice pitches and one or two might have gone up and down as it got a little bit older and drier. I mean, there is a game to be won. Is that going to come into it, do you think? 
Well, first of all, England are scoring so quickly. You know, we have short days here in Uralpindi and it is a very flat pitch. But that is slightly tempered. Those two things are slightly tempered by the rate at which England have scored. They're scoring so quickly that that will make it more likely that there's a chance of a result than teams that would just bat at, at, at normal pace. Um, <sighs> My experience here, although it's a long time ago, obviously, uh, is that the pitches didn't break up when we played. I don't know how he averaged less than 10 on these surfaces, by the way. They are the flattest things of all time. But they did not break up. You kind of expect them to break up, but they never did. As I said, I watched the practices, and as the two or three days developed, one or two started to just go up and down. So whether there's a chance of that here is very dry. Rob Key, who was here for that Australia test match, said that it's a bit drier than that game, and it's a different time of year. So the hope is that the conditions do change, because, to be honest, that's the only reason to play five-day cricket, is that the conditions have to change. If you're just going to have a road for five days, you know, what's the point? The whole point of a multi day game is that the conditions change and provide different challenges for the cricketers along the way so you know it's not a partisan point I'm making it's a more general point about cricket that conditions shouldn't hopefully stay the same day to day.